So now we will start with the Indian defense industry, Indian defense industry. If you see, India is one of the largest defense spender in the world. India is ranked fourth in the defense spending. India is third largest, sorry, India is third largest defense budget, ranked three. India is ranked three in the defense budget. Also, India imports more than 60% of its weaponry. You know, more than 60% imports, means that's the huge thing. That means we are hugely, you know, we are hugely dependent on the imports for weapons. India accounts for 12% of global, global arms imports. That means take any country, you know, which are, which are manufacturing weapons. Take it US, Russia, France, Israel, all these things that develop weapons. For those countries, that is why India is very important because India is a huge market for them. India is importing approximately 60% of its needs directly from outside out, out directly from the foreign nations. So when a country is mostly import dependent, that means this becomes a market for those countries which are producing the equipments. So that is the reason India is very important for Russia as well as the United States. Also, the Indian budget is much larger. India is just behind US and China. US is the largest spender after that China. So then comes India at three. After that, we have Russia and Saudi Arabia. They are the top five spenders, fourth Russia and fifth Saudi Arabia. Top five spenders, top five countries with the defense budget. So why is that India is spending a lot on its defense? Because India faces various challenges from its neighbors. We have seen recently what is happening in the Chinese sector, the Chinese borders. We have tensions in the in the oil world, in the Western sector with the Pakistan, right, right, quite after independence, right from independence time till today, we are having major disturbances in those in that area. So India has a peaceful border with China, but recently China's aggressive attitude is making us think how we have to, you know, increase our expenditure, increase our defense expenditure and deploy more of the resources even in the Western sector, that is in the Chinese border. So that is, so and also if you see the India-Bangladesh border or India-Myanmar border, the borders are very porous, even the Nepal border also, the borders are very porous. That means the high, there is a very high risk of drugs trafficking and human trafficking to those areas. And also there is a very high risk of smuggling, the arms smuggling and all. So if you see, India faces three major threats. First, as we know, Pakistan. Second, China. And third, the internal security, that's the next slides. So India has various challenges from all these three. So in order to make sure that we protect ourselves, in order to make sure that we defend our country, we are spending more on the defense. Also, India has about 7,500 kilometers of coastline. We know, if you see the map of India, the whole of southern India is surrounded by ocean. We should make sure that we protect our borders even in the southern, even in the southern belt, that is even in the ocean. India aims to become next security provider in the Indian Ocean. In the Indian Ocean, India aims to become the net security provider. Because India wants to assert its dominance in this area, in this Indian Ocean, because of what is happening recently. China is trying to you know, increase its influence in India's neighbors. We saw what is happening with Nepal. We saw what happened with Sri Lanka. We saw what happened in Maldives. We saw what is happening with Pakistan and even with Iran also. So that's why India has to make sure that it is strong. It is able to protect itself. Okay. So that is the reason India is spending more on its defense. With its, inter with its security environment, its great power ambitions and technological capabilities, India should have a robust defense manufacturing policy. So as we saw, India has various challenges. India has great power ambitions. And we also have to improve our technologies. We have to move forward. For that, what we have to do is increase our indigenous manufacturing capacity. We can't depend on other countries for our defense needs. Because when a warlike situation comes, we are never sure that the other country will supply its weapons. This is what happened in 1999 Kargil War. So we should make sure that we are self-dependent in our defense, in our defense equipments. We should make sure 
we are able to manufacture manufacture for our own needs it has two advantages first because of that what we can do is you know we can uh, save lot of foreign exchange so a lot of foreign exchange and second thing is we can create jobs when the indigenous manufacturing industry develops more and more jobs can be created in india itself that is also one of the aim so recently for that india has announced draft of defense procurement policy 2020 so till now we are following defense procurement policy 2016 now recently a new draft has been announced by our defense minister rajnath singh so if you see india is trying to indigenize the defense procurements for that what india is doing india is increasing its private sector involvement india is increasing it its private increasing the private sector involvement in defense manufacturing till now most of the defense equipments are manufactured by the government based industries the research is done by drdo and manufacturing is done by ordnance factories so now what india is trying to do is it is trying to involve the private sector also because if you don't involve the private sector the developments become slow and also the competition will not increase in the market because of that we will be lagging behind this is what we have seen if you see us most of the important technologies developed by private and private companies the boeing and the airbus so they develop very very various equipments for the us army and us navy so that is what india also has to do that is why india is trying to increase private sector engagement in defense manufacturing in 1990 self reliance review committee was set up under former president and former scientist apj abdul kalam our late scientist apj abdul kalam and it had formulated a 10 year self reliance plan but we have not able to achieve that till now we have not indigenized our defense mix so india today is you know it, it is focused mainly to improve its local defense manufacturing india wants to increase its defense manufacturing indigenously for that india has recently changed certain rules india is now allowing 74% fdi under the automatic route till now it was 49% recently in 2020 it has increased to 74% and also we have seen the new defense procurement procedure with more liberal norms with more liberal norms has been announced it's a draft you now maybe soon the policy also will be announced and also one more important step that we took we now have a chief of defense staff it has been a long pending you know uh, demand of the armed forces to have a chief of defense staff because today in this world in this globalized world and this interconnected world we cannot have uh, every sector you know we cannot have you know all the army navy and air force acting individually in different sectors because when there is a war the army and the air force along with the navy has to work in cohesion so for this cohesion to happen we now have the chief of defense staff also in the procurements each and every force have its own needs the chief of defense staff will try to examine all the needs from the tri service angle and this will avoid redundancy of capacities across the services that is the reason the chief of defense staff is very important and it's a great step that india has taken appoint the chief of defense staff in 2020 also india has to focus on creating a robust border management system this is very important robust border management system because india has very porous borders not because of you know any uh, because of lack of inf- lack of uh, what do you call it? you know problems or you can say because of problems on indian side or something we have the porous borders because of the historical reasons and also the terrain plays a very important role you know we don't have planes in the borders just to guard normally so because of that uh, it is very difficult for the forces if you see the india pakistan border in rajasthan we have desert in gujarat we have the salt desert in the rajasthan we have desert after that if you go to jammu kashmir we have the mountains if you see chinese border it is fully covered with snow in few areas even the bangladesh border it is covered by the forest the thick forest of sundarbans even the myanmar india myanmar border also covered by thick forest of the northeast so terrain is the greatest problem for indian forces when they are guarding so india should try, india should try to overcome all these challenges by creating a robust border management system 
because protecting our border is very important for us. Okay, protecting our border is very important for us in order to defend the country. So these are the these are the important things related to the Indian defense industry. Now we will start with the missiles. If we talk about Indian missile systems, we, can, we should first go back to the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, which was started in 1983. It was started in 1983. This is the brain, you know, it is a pet project of our former president, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. So he was the back then the mission director. So the main aim of this Integrated Guided Missile Development Program is to make India self-sufficient in missile technology. Because back then, during the Cold War era, there are a lot of things that are happening in the world, a lot of political things. The US and the other Western countries, they don't want India to get the, uh, you know, what you call it, the next level, or you can say the next generation technologies. They don't want India to develop. They don't want India to, you know, develop with these technologies getting from outside. Because India, is not, India was not leaning with them. They, they tried to impose sanctions when India tested its nuclear program. So India thought it should have an integrated guided missile development program on its own and should develop technologies on its own because we no longer can depend on other nations for different technologies because we know we are not going to get that. So this was conceived you know, by our uh, former president. He was the mission director back then. Also, this integrated missile development program was conceived in response to the MTCR, the Missile Technology Control Regime. What is this MTCR? This MTCR was developed in 1987, 1987 by the G7 countries. Why this was developed? This was developed to make sure that few countries, or you can say the countries which have you know, greater technologies in missile, missile programs, like, like greater capabilities in their missile development programs, they should not give those, these technologies to the countries like India. That is the main aim of this MTCR. They should not give that technology. Because if the countries like India get these technologies easily, then the West fears that these countries like India will overtake them. That is the reason they wanted to make sure that we, the countries like India will not get these technologies. That is the reason this was this came into picture. So this was initially, uh, not even today, it was informal and voluntary partnership of 35 countries initially. So this, this you know, this MTCR, regulates the technologies which are 500 kg payload and the range is minimum of 300. So above 300 and 500 kg, those technologies, if a missile is having 500 kg payload and its range is more than 300 kilometers, this technology should not be given to the countries which are not under the MTCR. So the, in simple words, this is MTCR. Okay. So all the decisions are taken by consensus of all the members. India also recently became member of the MTCR. See how it went. There was a time when these regimes were formed to counter countries like India. And today, India is one of the major players in these regimes. That's how we turned the table around. This was started in 1987. Okay. In 1992, the focus of the regime extended to the proliferation of missiles for the deliveries of all types of weapons of mass destruction, nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons. It is not a legally binding treaty. It is not legally binding. Hence, no punitive measures could be taken against non-compliance to the guidelines of the regime. This is not you know, legally binding. One more important fact, China is not a member of MTCR even today. China is not a member. That is about MTCR, Missile Technology Control Regime. Next. So, if we continue with the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, which was started in 1983, this completed in 2012. Completed in 2012. So under this, you have developed various weapons. Depending on the requirements, you have developed various weapons. Some other weapons are not some other weapons. The weapons which are developed under this are the major weapons. First, Prithvi, the short-range surface-to-surface ballistic missile. What is ballistic missile? We will see that a bit later. Remember, Prithvi is short-range surface-to-surface ballistic missile. Next, we have Agni. It's an intermediate range surface to surface ballistic missile. It's also the intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM. The Agni 5 is ICBM. We also have Trishul, the short range low level surface to air missile, the SAM. Trishul is a SAM, surface to air missile. 
Next, Akash, the medium range surface fuel missile. It's short range, visually short range surface medium. The Akash is medium range surface to air missile. So, next, we have the NAG, the anti tank missile. NAG is anti tank missile. Okay, so after the success of Agni, it was separated from the integrated guided missile, guided missile development program after realizing the strategic importance of Agni. Okay, so these are the five weapons that were developed under the integrated guided missile development program. So what are the five? Prithvi, Agni, Trishul, Akash, and Nag. So there is a mnemonic to remember this. Patna, P A T N A. Okay. So P for Prithvi, A for Agni, T for Trishul, N for Nag, and A for Akash. So this is the mnemonic for the for remembering the missiles under the integrated guided missile development program. Okay. Now what is a ballistic missile? We'll be hearing a lot ballistic missiles, cruise missiles. What is ballistic missile? So ballistic missile is something which follows a projectile motion. That is simply the ballistic missile. We have, we, I think most of us have read in our physics in our school days. 